Hi there, my name's Ali. I'm running the software practice session for this year's University Day at Fuse in Edinburgh. So welcome along. Uh, I'm excited to tell you about what we've got in store for you. And um, what that is, is we've got five different software vendors and industry partners coming along to give you some hands-on experience of not only the software, but also the processes that we use in industry right now. So there's going to be five different choices. You're going to see their introduction videos and hear a little bit more about what the sessions are going to entail in just a minute. Um, what we want you to do is take a look, choose your favorite one, the one that you would prefer to do, and let us know on the Facebook page. So I'm just going to wait right here while you take a look at those videos, and I'll see you in a second. I am here to talk to you about the STEM Design Workshop. This is a course we're running as part of the University Day at the FUSE Annual Conference this year in Edinburgh. My name is Jeff Lowe, I work for Metadata Solutions, and I'm going to be co-presenting this course with Claudia Fritzer and Kiana Luce, both of Bayer Pharmaceuticals. What we're going to be covering in this course is primarily based on how we set up and execute a good data collection program um, using an electronic data capture system or EDC system, and in this case, Metadata Array. We're going to cover looking at a protocol extracting the relevant and most important components of the protocol such as the schedule of activities or eligibility criteria and then working out how we turn that into uh, case report forms for capturing the data such that we get good quality data flowing downstream so all the data analyses can proceed unfettered. The types of people who will be interested in this course are people who are involved in biological about pharmaceutical sciences, anybody who's into maths and statistics. Software engineering is obviously a very big part of what we do now. So anybody who has that sort of interest would be well suited to turn, attend this course. What we need from you is an inquiry mind, obviously. Uh, you're going to need a, a laptop or computer capable of running a, a web browser. And we also need access to an email or contact email for you. This is not for any sort of contact purposes, but primarily just to set you up with an account in the system itself. We're going to be supplying a Slack channel, which will give you the opportunity to ask questions or any uh, further inquiries you might have. Um, but we're very excited about taking part in this course and very much looking forward to speaking with you about it. So if you have time, look forward to seeing you start of October. Thank you. I'm Rohan Sarthe and I'm Surma Das and we work as software developers at Cycle. I will be there at the University Day event, Fuse Conference this October, Edinburgh and I'll speak about capabilities of our language and demonstrate it with the help of simulations. Now let's take a sneak peek at what the event is going to be all about. With the advancement in medical technology, new approaches of designing trials are gaining prominence. But at the same time, it is also important to have a prior idea of how the design compares to the alternative ones. This has the potential of saving years of efforts and millions of dollars. So here comes into picture simulations. In its broadest sense, simulation is an imitation of a real world system. Now to carry out this simulation, there is a need of an efficient and flexible programming language. We will be talking about one such programming language, R. So, are simulations this may be sounding foreign to you but not to worry same was the case with me when i was also a student couple of years back at iit bombay but now after joining the industry i have come here to appreciate their importance in solving real life problems now start talking a bit more about r to many people it's just the 18th letter of the alphabet but r is also a name of a popular programming language which is used extensively in case of statistical computing, data analytics, and scientific research. The main advantage of using R is that it is open source, which means that the usage is free and also you can do the source code to know exactly what it is doing. Hence, you can also make changes to the code to make it your own, so you don't have to wait for future releases. You can do it by yourself. The other advantage of using R are the graphical functionalities that it offers which are simply outstanding. 
also today r is around 5000 packages inbuilt in it most of which are specific to certain applications so that means you don't have to be a specialized r programmer to start building your own applications at the same time r is also platform independent that means you can integrate it with different programming languages and run it on different operating systems r is nowadays used in almost every field that you can think of be it finance bioscience marketing supply chain retail Uh, management and in companies as diverse as Google, Merck, Pfizer, Bank of America, and Shell. We also want to brief you about the topic of simulation. So, as we mentioned before, in its broadest sense, simulation is an imitation of a real world system. With the help of simulations, you can explore the merits of a system without actually physically building it. So, now let's take a real life scenario to illustrate this further. Let's take an example from a clinical trial domain. In clinical trials. A new drug is tested on patients for its effectiveness and safety. So one of the main thing here is to recruit the required number of patients who can potentially benefit from this drug. But there are looming questions related to this recruitment process. Will we be able to recruit the required number of patients at all? Where do we start enrolling these recruits? How many hospitals do we consider? What is the time for this recruitment process? Will there be any dropouts and many more? So for a successful and efficient completion of this recruitment process it is best if we have an estimate of the parameters before the start of the trial so here comes the power of simulations with the help of simulations you can get a fair estimate about these parameters under different scenarios also it will help the pharma industry to plan ahead of time thus saving significant amount of money and effort so this was a simple example but at the same time one can solve complex real life problems So all in all what can you expect from this event you will take home a basic idea about r programming and a basic introduction to simulation so the event is not only limited to statisticians at the same time students from other streams can also get benefit from it so you all are welcome see you all there thank, thank you, you. Hi there. My name is Mark Wilden. I'm the CEO and founder of Formedics. Formedics reduces the time and cost of running end-to-end -end clinical trials. We help use up-and-coming CDIS standards to cut down the time to specify and build data capture systems, and also convert data to recently approved formats for FDA submissions. Gilbert, in the second part of Um, our presentation today is going to show you how to create some of these standards that describe the data sets that are submitted to the FDA. Developing a drug is costly and it's a lengthy process. It can cost billions of dollars and take as long as 12 years for an experimental drug to travel from the laboratory to your medicine cabinet. Only 5 in 5,000 new drugs make it all the way to market. Before a company can sell a drug to the public, it must be approved by a regulatory authority like the FDA in the United States. CDISC is a global, non-profit, charitable organisation that develops data standards to streamline clinical research. One of these standards is Define XML, which is a required standard for data submissions to the FDA and the PMDA. What is Define XML? Well, here's what it looks like. Define XML provides metadata that describes any tabular dataset structure. It provides a list of the datasets included in a submission, along with a detailed description of the contents of each dataset. Define XML is great, but it can be hard for people to understand the content. To simplify things, we can publish it as a PDF or as HTML. The result, as shown here, is a file that makes everything clear for people who don't understand XML. This is typically included along with a submission to make the dataset metadata easily visible to the reviewer. So how do you create a Define XML file? Using Formedics On Demand Services, you can convert a spreadsheet file containing dataset metadata to Define XML.
You can also use our on-demand services to convert one or more SAS XPT files to define XML. You can also use our Dataset Design tool. Dataset Designer lets you create, edit and output dataset metadata from scratch. Templates are provided for working with CDISC content standards such as STTM, SEND and ADAM. Once you have created all your datasets, you can quickly build your Define XML file. You can also publish your Define file as a PDF or an HTML file. As part of your training, we'll show you how to create Define XML files using Formedics on-demand services and Dataset Designer. Hi, I'm Bakumi, an analytics specialist from SAS. I'd love to invite you to join our hands-on session that shows how analytics can be made simple. We will be given prizes to all participants who join our session and Amazon vouchers to the top two. You'll get access to data that you can analyse and report on using the latest version of SAS. There will be instructions on how to get this for free at the end of this video. So make sure to come along to learn about why SAS is trusted in the pharmaceutical industry when analysing patient data. We absolutely look forward to seeing you in Edinburgh. Select the first link and you'll be presented with this page. Follow the instructions on here and you'll be all set. Hello, my name is Ian Fleming. I'll be running the clinical data science section uh, for the university day at the FUSE annual conference in Edinburgh. Uh, I am a statistician and a software product manager. Uh, which means that basically my job is to theorize and help develop software applications uh, in the life sciences space for the purpose of analyzing clinical data. Um, before we get to that though, uh, let me give you a quick high-level overview of clinical research. Um, you know, the ultimate goal of clinical research is to get medical therapies into the hands of people who need them for whatever disease or ailment they're trying to alleviate. Uh, and how do we do this? Uh, so we start with a, a therapy that is intended to treat a particular disease. Uh, we design studies uh, that are intended to answer specific research questions related to that therapy and the disease. Uh, and then we collect some data uh, that helps us answer that question. We analyze that data and then we submit um, the results and that data to uh, regulatory bodies around the world like the FDA in the US, uh, EMEA in Europe, uh, PMDA in uh, Japan. And you know, these regulatory approvals are required in order to make the therapies generally available to the public. Um, and once we've actually um, had, a process, had a drug that actually went through that type of process, um, we still have a role to play in making sure that those therapies continue to contribute to public health and to ensure that they continue to be safe and efficacious. Uh, so what role does clinical data science play in this entire process? Um, you know, Clinical data scientists work with medical experts in order to formulate uh, research questions uh, to be answered. They actually work in designing some of the studies. Uh, they will also work to, uh, once data is collected, they'll work to actually kind of clean that data and wrangle it and put it into a state where they can actually start doing some analyses. Um, and those analyses can take the form of either structured study analyses um, which are the types of analyses that contribute directly to those regulatory submissions and approvals. So those um, structured study analyses uh, rely pretty heavily on classical statistical practices and methods, the things that you might learn in university. Um, but in addition to that, there's also unstructured study analyses. And these uh, analyses are a little bit more experimental uh, and exploratory. 
Uh, and they actually involve methodologies like uh, some data mining or a lot of natural language processing or maybe even some machine learning or artificial intelligence and things like that. Um, so that's basically the role that clinical data scientists play uh, in the clinical development process. So what to expect during the session uh, at the FUSE annual conference. Uh, we'll, give a little, we'll dig into a little bit more detail about the role of clinical data science in uh, clinical research. We'll talk a little bit more about the actual process of how some of these things happen. And then also we'll actually have some hands-on activities where we'll walk through a few practical examples. Uh, maybe we'll do some technical exercises uh, using Python and actually doing some analyses. Uh, I thank you for watching this, uh, and I look forward to seeing you in Edinburgh. Okay, so now you've had a look at what the vendors have got to offer. So now you need to make your choice. Give us your preferred one in a comment or on the poll on the Facebook page, and we will do our best to get you that selection. There may be some pre-work, some setup work to do, either installing software or reading a protocol, something like that, depending on, on the selection that you make. Uh, so once you've made that selection, we'll get that to you a couple of weeks before the conference in, in October. So thanks very much. I look forward to seeing you on the day. It's going to be an hour and a half, full hands-on experience. Come prepared. Uh, we're not going to mess around. We're just going to get straight on and do it. So uh, I look forward to seeing you then. Good luck. Bye.